150 years ago, or 200 years ago, when the blacks were slaves, did they ever go to Washington, D.C. and have a rally 200 years ago to protest against slavery? Did they? No. What did they do? Well, a lot of good people in the plantations would say, hey, it's wintertime. Let's, let us help build a church for you, dear folks. And they loved them and taught them how to read so they can read the Bible. And here's what the blacks did about 150 years ago. They humbled themselves. They prayed. They sought God's face and they turned from their wicked ways. And God made slavery illegal through a several white presidents, right? It worked, didn't it? There is so much in that clip we need to respond to. But first, I have to say this. I have to say it. Did you think that slaves needed to be humble? That that was a group of people that needed to be taken down a peg. People who were literally sold into chattel slavery. They were, you know, walking around like they were too good for everybody until those <laughs> lovely, wonderful slave owners came down and said, I love you. Let me build you a church and teach you to read. And also, I'm going to beat the life out of you and potentially kill you if you don't work my fields for no money. Jackson, this is, it's so shockingly offensive and historically inaccurate. And, and, and I mean, he just is clearly a dumb guy who doesn't know anything. I mean, even outside of just talking about this, you could tell there's just not much going on up there because he, and, and all that we watched, he really didn't say that much. All he could have said was, you know, there were some pretty decent slave owners. And in fact, they taught them the love of Jesus and that kind of helped set them on the right path. But he's not intelligent enough to just cle cleanly say anything. He was up there like, well, you know, what? it was like just, just like, pss, pss, like going on in his head, like his thoughts were like scrambling. And, you know, uh, just pearly things found herself in this situation, too, where it's like just trying to describe stuff. Well, you know, a lot of slaves saw George Washington as a father figure. And it's just like, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's such a pointless thing to defend. And it says a lot about you if you even try to, um, because the, again, people being owned, like no one's gonna like that. And right. on top of all the slave revolts that happened, not just in this country, but all over the uh, all over the Western Hemisphere, um, again, this guy clearly doesn't know anything about anything, and he also looks like a giant toad. So there's that. There is that, and I'll just say th this is somebody who believes that Biden, as he puts it, is spiritually wicked. But I think we didn't even, because it was so, the absurdity of what he said was so overwhelming. We didn't even mention the fact that his point in that video was that he was arguing that people should pray for Trump to get back in power instead of rioting on January 6th. He compared Trump no longer being the president to slavery, <laughs> to slavery. <laughs> but but again, and, and it was slavery for him wasn't that bad. It was right. benevolent. It was a benevolent system that took drooling, stupid Africans and showed them civility, basically. And next thing you know, you know, now we have some opportunity in, in the land. That, that, that's how he sees it. And that again, that's about the extent of his knowledge. But it, you can't have it both ways. Slavery can't be what you're referring to Trump not being reelected. But also, it really wasn't that bad, you know, so you, you, you got to choose one. There's also this really bizarre twist in the story that the pastor's son in law is Josh Duggar, the disgraced oldest brother from the show 19 Kids and Counting, who's, by the way, currently in prison serving a sentence for possession of child pornography. Oh, well, you know, no one's perfect. Sin exists in the world. And Jesus, all you got to do is call on Jesus and he'll come in there and he'll wash your sins white as snow. You know what I'm saying? That's all you got to do. You just always have to believe in Jesus. That, that, that's it. But, you know, Donald Trump, him him being out of office, that's the devil, of course. You so is Barack Obama. <laughs> yeah. Who was it that said that, um, that Barack Obama, Thomas Sowell, said that Barack Obama was as bad as Adolf Hitler. And that what you just said reminded me of that because you brought up <laughs> yeah. just pearly things getting yeah. really embarrassed on the H3 podcast as they tried to hold her accountable. That was for claiming. so bad. So horrible, because oh. she's, she's making the argument that, that because Roots 
was a, a movie that it was overplaying the awfulness of slavery. And she just couldn't actually defend that point. But you have to defend that point, right? <laughs> if you're a conservative, you made the point, you can't apologize, you can never say you're wrong. So you have to sit there and say, yeah, actually, I think that slavery wasn't that bad. And especially as a white conservative saying that, it, you'll never be able to say that in a, a way that doesn't make you look like the worst person <laughs> to ever exist. And, and and they don't understand it and they don't want to understand it. And again, it's really bigger than just like what happened in America with the slavery system. It's really just being willing to understand how society works and how human beings function and what we do to each other, depending on the circumstances, depending on what the environment's like. You know, um, it, it, it's really just more about that. Um, so oftentimes when people go above and beyond to do things like protect the American system of slavery, you're really just showing that you don't understand the world and you don't understand how society works. That, that's all you're showing. I mean, and it's the same people right now who are making the argument that affirmative action is actually racist and yeah. that it's anti-racist to reverse a policy that was only put in place to attempt to, you know, reverse the horrible impacts of segregation and slavery in this country. So now to claim that actually white people are the victims of racism, actually slavery wasn't that bad. Actually, white people were the people who, you know, educated the slaves and uplifted them out of slavery. I mean, it really is somehow creating a narrative where they're always the victim and they're always the savior. In these mm -hmm. conservatives' minds, they have to be both. White people have to be both sides of the coin in their in ridiculous narrative was, of American history. I was gonna say how the West was won, that type of attitude. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Like how we won the West. It was won fair and square. We just, you know what I'm saying? It was a game and we just won the game. But uh, I think that's a book or a song, How the West Was Won, but it it it, it sums up the attitude. Uh, this country was won. Uh, but in fact, this country's an empire. Just look at all the land we control. Um, and too, I mean, just it, it's so crazy. Like you look at some of the things, the horrible things that have happened in this country that weren't that long ago. When you really put it in perspective, my grandfather was born in 1916, and um, uh, a lot of the massacres and the situation that was going on with a Native American named Sitting Bull happened, and like not that long before that, uh, Plains Indians literally just being straight up massacred. The treaty after treaty after treaty being broken. These things happened like in the very late 1800s, the early 1900s. These things weren't long ago. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the United States, in fact, has a very rich history of becoming an empire because that's what the United States is. The, our landmass is huge. And it used to be many, many, many nations. And now it's not. Right. And I think just to the point of like how recent this history really is, it. The argument that the Supreme Court is making, and I'm bringing it back to this other story about affirmative action, is that racism is over, which is a an absolutely absurd <laughs> thing to claim. I mean, first of all, you know, Jim Crow laws, the Civil Rights Act wasn't passed, you know, until the mid 1960s. That's recent. That's exceptionally <laughs> recent. My dad was born in 1951. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is exceptionally recent history. So the idea that in just you know one or two generations we have completely you know destroyed concepts of 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 race and inequality in this country. We could look around and say that's obviously not the case. Mm -hmm. And again, racism is honestly just a part of human psychology. It just is. So that's why there's always work to be done.